Hello my dear friends, uh, welcome back. Now we are moving towards another segment in the upper limb topic and that is about the blood supply of upper limb. And when it comes to blood supply of the upper limb, like it's all in sequence. Like first of all, we are actually going to learn about the axillary artery over here. We know that it is actually a continuation of subclavian artery only. You know? So subclavian artery from here will continue to axillary artery. Then axillary artery will continue in the arm as brachial artery. And that brachial artery will actually come in the cubital fossa and it will be dividing into the radial artery and ulnar artery guys. And this radial and ulnar artery will be traveling in the forearm and finally they will be going in the hand and in the hand they are going to form the arches which are referred to as palmar arches. So we are going to learn all these things in sequence. So I am going to teach you about the axillary artery. Along with it I will also teach you about the anastomosis here, scapular anastomosis followed by the brachial artery and the anastomosis around the elbow and then followed by the radial artery and ulnar artery and the formation of the palmar arches guys. That is the entire plan about the blood supply to your upper limb. So to begin with first of all, start with first of all my dear friends, you can see on the screen, okay in this picture, I hope you are able to appreciate first of all, there will be a subclavian artery here. The name itself is telling you below the clavicle subclavian artery and that subclavian artery will further continue into your axillary artery. It is the one which will continue forward as axillary artery and the axillary artery is the one finally it will continue to the brachial artery guys. Fine. Now we have understood the continuation of these arteries here but I want the exact landmark like I want where is that subclavian artery ending and where will be the axillary artery actually beginning understanding. We know that subclavian artery will continue to axillary artery but where exactly subclavian artery ending and from where the axillary artery will begin. So guys if you just look at this picture more closely in this image you are able to see here this will be the first rib here and this is actually the outer border of the first rib outer border or you can even tell the lateral border. So outer border of the first rib up to there it will be known as your subclavian artery till there it is subclavian artery and from there begins your axillary artery. So basically we can say that axillary artery is beginning from where? From the outer border of the first rib and after beginning from here the axillary artery will be traveling all the way. It's going down you can clearly see here moving, moving, moving down and finally it will be extending up to the lower border of teres major muscle. It's up to the lower border of teres major muscle. So we have already seen that teres minor and teres minor major on the posterior aspect guys. So remember the axillary artery will be up to what guys? Up to the lower border of teres major. That is the first thing that you have to first of all learn. The extent of axillary artery. The axillary artery is finally extending from where to where guys? From the first rib, outer border of the first rib up to the lower border of teres major. Fine. That is the first point you have to learn. And the second point uh, that you have to learn here is that the axillary artery will be divided into three parts. Now how it is divided into three parts? Yes. In this look at this diagram here guys, there is a rib number three here and this will be the rib number four here and this will be the rib number five. Rib number three, four and five. And from there we can see a muscle originating and this muscle will be, all these three muscle bellies will be combining together and inserting here onto the coracoid process here guys. That's the coracoid process of the scapula. So originating from rib number 3, 4 and 5, inserting onto the coracoid process that muscle is present here only and that muscle is definitely a pectoralis muscle and it is pectoralis minor muscle guys, pectoralis minor muscle. Now why am I telling you about this pectoralis minor muscle here? Why because? Because of this pectoralis minor muscle, my dear friends remember, the entire axillary artery will be actually divided to three parts. It will be divided to three parts. So you are able to appreciate here, there is a small part before the muscle. So before the muscle that will be the first part and there will be a small part of the axillary artery behind the muscle and that will be the second part and there is another part of the artery that is after the muscle or we can say distal to the muscle and that is the third part. So proximal or before the muscle that is first part, before the muscle first part here, then behind the muscle, posterior to the muscle second part and after the muscle that will be the third part guys, distal to that one. Okay. So basically what you have to remember your focus should be on that muscle. What is a muscle which is dividing the axillary artery into three parts? That is pectoralis minor muscle. So pectoralis minor muscle divides the axillary artery into three parts. So let us just make a note of all these structures here. Then later on we will move towards the branches of axillary artery guys. So please uh, write down the heading there as axillary artery. And first of all let us see like what will be the extent of axillary artery. It is extending from where to where. So write this like in short here guys, first you will be having subclavian artery and this subclavian artery will continue as axillary artery 
and finally the axillary artery will continue down into the arm as your brachial artery brachial artery fine so subclavian then axillary then the brachial artery now we will be calling it as subclavian artery up to where what is the extent of that one yes that is up to the outer outer border of first rib outer border of first rib guys okay and then the axillary artery will be extending up to where the axillary artery will be extending up to the lower border up to the lower border of teres major muscle guys low border of teres major muscle so subclavian artery will be extending up to the outer border of the first rib from there begins your axillary artery and that is going to extend up to the lower border of teres major and from there begins your brachial artery guys so that is the best way so that is the best way to learn here fine now once you are done with the extent of the axillary artery the second thing is very much important guys that is it is divided into how many parts axillary artery is divided to how many parts guys three parts with the help of which muscle yes pectoralis minor muscle so axillary artery is divided into three parts divided into three parts by which muscle that's important by pectoralis minor muscle be very careful with the minor and major guys wherever it comes it can be a point of confusion for you in the exam so axillary artery is divided how many parts three parts by which muscle pectoralis minor muscle now the best way we'll do here is that you know instead of writing in a paragraph let us actually draw the diagram of this one axillary artery and then we'll see the branches there itself guys okay so whatever diagram i have shown you here of the axillary artery divided again into three parts let's try to draw it here guys so that the things will become easier for us so imagine this one here to be the coracoid process here and this here will be the pectoralis minor muscle so this one will be the pectoralis minor muscle fine now what about the axillary artery axillary artery is starting from the outer border of the first rib and then it is going to pass behind the pectoralis minor muscle and then it is going to move down into the arm and in this diagram we can clearly clearly appreciate here guys the part which is like before the muscle will be the first part and the part which is behind the muscle will be the second part and the part which is after the muscle will be the third part guys so that is the third part of the axillary artery perfectly done now the next thing whenever we are learning about any artery in artery we have to always learn about the branches now there is a beautiful symmetry here guys in axillary artery there is very nice symmetry first part of the axillary artery will give one branch second part of the axillary artery will give like two branches and the third part of the axillary artery will actually give you three branches so it's it's very simple so first part will give like one branch second part will give two branches and third part will give three branches and all these branches in my class right now i'm not going to make you mug up the branches guys i'll make you learn the branches and the names are like quite meaningful the best way to learn the branches is first of all apply this diagram on your body you have to imagine here okay if this is the pectoralis minor muscle over here where do you have the first part first part is before that muscle before here so if it is here it is giving one branch and that branch is just above the thorax here so if this is our thorax here that branch is above the thorax so superior thoracic artery so what is the name of the artery guys superior thoracic artery so the first part will actually give you a branch here that is superior thoracic artery that's all that's the only one branch given from the first part done now welcome to the second part second part will actually give you two branches and out of these two branches one of the branch will be given along the lateral border i mean to say like lateral or outer border of the pectoralis minor and that is actually the lateral thoracic nerve lateral thoracic artery so it makes sense first part is here that is above the thorax so that is why superior thoracic artery and second part is little bit lateral to the thorax so that is why lateral thoracic artery now it will be giving like one more branch as i said you second part will give like two branches and one more branch going over here now the one more branch that will be going over here guys fine so it's like you know from the thorax it is going towards the acromion process over here so just try to remember like a hint there thoraco acromial trunk that is known as the thoraco acromial trunk so this second branch over here is nothing but your thoraco acromial trunk perfectly done so these are the two branches given from the second part of the axillary artery guys always try to do one thing don't try to rush you know don't try to just you know rush and you know finish up the topic very quickly you know 
So always be like calm and composed and try to do it very perfectly so that if you just spend some time now properly, calmly, you will be able to retain that for a longer time. Is it okay? So try to understand and learn. So one is a lateral thoracic artery, another one is a thoracoacromial artery. Now here, at, here itself I will tell you that thoracoacromial trunk is actually in turn dividing into four branches here. Now what are the names of those four branches? Let us write it here itself guys. It is in turn dividing into like four branches over there. So one will be the acromial branch, acromial branch, acromial artery of thoracoacromial trunk. Another one will be the pectoral branch, pectoral branch. And then another one will be the clavicular branch, clavicular branch. And finally, the next one will be the deltoid branch. So if you uh, apply a little bit of common sense over there, so everything is located in this region here, guys, like deltoid, the clavicular, the acromial and the pectoral. Understanding? So instead of A, B, C, D, some people love to remember this as A, P, C, D, guys. So it's like a mnemonic if you are, if you love to learn with mnemonics. So it's like A, P, C, D, you can remember. That's all done. Now welcome to the next part that is the third part, third part of the axillary artery here. Now try to again understand the same thing, location. Okay, now always the location is very much important here. Third part is somewhere here and just later to that one here, you'll be actually having your humerus bone here guys. Humerus bone will be present here. So we'll try to understand here, okay, this is actually your humerus here. If this will be the shaft of the humerus here, the greater tubercle on the outer side, I mean to say lateral side, this is the head of the humerus here. So head of the humerus towards the medial side and greater tubercle towards the lateral side. Now the third part will actually give one of the artery in front of the surgical neck of the humerus here going around and another artery which is actually going behind. I think already you are getting the name in your mind. I have said you that many a times in anatomy whenever any artery is going around the name of the artery will be circumflex and it is going around the humerus. So circumflex humeral artery. So one will be the anterior circumflex humeral artery, another one is posterior circumflex humeral artery guys. So this one here will be the anterior circumflex humeral artery and this one here will be the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So there will be one anterior circumflex humeral artery, another one is a posterior circumflex humeral artery. It makes sense. I am telling you again and again, the same thing if you write it like a paragraph, it will be a difficult thing for you to understand and learn. Instead of simply mugging up, better learn with the location guys. Now, after these two branches, one last and final, why because I told you, third part will give three branches. The last and final one, one more branch going down here, yes, below the scapula. So therefore, this will be the subscapular artery here. So there will be a sub scapular artery. So these are the three branches which are given from the third part of the axillary artery guys. So let us just do one thing, let us just summarize here. As I told you, there is a beautiful symmetry here. Like all the three parts of the axillary artery, there is a very nice symmetry here guys. The first part will give like one branch, second part will give two branches and third part will give you three branches. And best way to learn, follow my method, apply this diagram on your body. If you just know the location, it will be easier. So pectoralis minor muscle over here, first part is before the muscle. So before the muscle, first part above the thorax here, superior thoracic artery. Second part will be little bit lateral to that one. So it will be giving the lateral thoracic artery along with the thoracoacromial and thoracoacromial artery it will be giving four branches right from first year MBBS. We have been learning the four branches as A, P, C, D. Okay. So we can easily remember with the structures present here only guys. Then the third part here, one is anterior circumflex humeral, another one is posterior circumflex humeral and then the subscapular artery. Done. Now the next thing that we have to learn apart from this, we are done with the extent, we are done with the division, we are done with the branches. Now one more important thing I want to just revise in your mind. We have already discussed this in our previous topics guys. Can you just recall and tell me there will be a nerve which is actually going along or accompanying along with the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Just recall in your mind. I hope you are telling me the answer as axillary artery. Yes. If you are telling the answer is axillary artery, you are on the right track. Okay. So axillary artery is going behind the surgical neck of the humerus and along with that there will be posterior circumflex humeral artery. Already we have discussed. And one more thing I want you to make a note here. There will be like one more nerve which will be going along with the subscapular artery also. There will be a nerve going along with the subscapular artery also guys. Now what is the name of this nerve? This will be the nerve to latissimus dorsi, the nerve to latissimus dorsi or the thoracodorsal nerve guys. So nerve to latissimus dorsi or thoracodorsal nerve. 
so it is like you know uh, one one category of question where most of the examiners will be asking okay, like which nerve will be accompanying like which artery or which artery is accompanying which nerve so whenever both of them are traveling together you should know like which nerve is going along with which artery so that is how like it becomes a important question for your exam fine after after learning all these things here the last and final thing out of all the branches given by the axillary artery which is the largest branch of the axillary artery so out of these branches guys remember the largest branch here will be the subscapular artery so subscapular artery is the largest branch of the axillary artery out of all the branches the largest one will be the subscapular artery completely done now after completing this one let us do one thing let us just see the same all these branches in the atlas diagram here guys like whatever diagram we have drawn let's try to appreciate all these branches in this diagram here so in this diagram yes definitely you are able to appreciate here this is pectoralis minor muscle if there is pectoralis minor muscle before the muscle first part behind the muscle second part and after the muscle that there will be third part here sir now out of this out of all the branches out of all the branches yes the first part first part will give the only one branch and you are able to see here this will be the superior thoracic artery here guys so this is here the superior thoracic artery perfect and i told you second part will give two branches and out of these two branches you can see one branch which is towards the lateral border of pectoralis minor so this one here will be the lateral thoracic artery the lateral thoracic artery and then the second part will also give like one more branch which is going here thoraco acromial trunk or the thoraco acromial artery and you can even appreciate that it is dividing into like four branches which we have learned like a p c d over there now welcome to the third part third part is actually giving one in the front that is anterior circumflex humeral artery and one behind that is posterior circumflex humeral artery going behind the surgical neck of the humerus okay fine here and then the last and final one i as i told you the largest branch that is your subscapular artery you can appreciate here guys the one which is moving down here that is your subscapular artery and subscapular artery is the one which is actually going along with the thoracodorsal nerve uh, and it is also known as the nerve to latissimus dorsi guys so whatever diagram we have drawn here we are able to easily compare now that with the atlas diagram here in the anatomy perfectly done guys so that's all about the axillary artery and now we'll move towards the next topic that is about anastomosis another very important topic for your exams guys